Welcome to the map Westfold in a one-on-one -on -one matchup in the BFME1 online battle arena for the patch 2.2 to be picked random and we'll get to play with the Reader Mark faction. Master the Rohirrim boys. Just like in the films, it's gonna be Rohan against Isengard. We like those. And we need to make sure that Theodin will be happy with the result of this gameplay. So Westfold will not fall. I'm actually gonna cancel one of the farms because we have so many settlements outside is it christmas again bro i'm here for my friends for lunch. use whatever weapons you can muster Come, let's people. go boys can i cancel it in time and no i couldn't i pl i built it a bit too early when you don't build it that early people. you can cancel it and get the full money back the land is full of dangers. you making video the yes sir you will dangers. you will see it later on on youtube bro there are wargs nearby. Yeah. war chant has Let's been used from him so we can split up the peasants and use the number advantage we got right because we know even in a 2v1 with the war chant his uruks will beat us up so knowing that basically you know brings us to the solution solution that we don't need to take a fight and we need to force him into a choice which peasant to chase first you can also keep this with the hobbit and we will recruit also one more peasant from this farm to sport mary I mean, you know, let's be honest, Loki, Rohan is potentially one of the greatest factions in this map, you know. You have basically like five, six barracks. You can keep producing more and more peasants from everywhere. And it's very difficult for anybody to keep up with your spam. So even though the peasants are not strong enough to match the strength of Gondor soldiers or the Uruks, but they can get out, they can outnumber any warrior. Beautiful. Okay, we are looking pretty strong right now. You can use the Alt key, Alt and then right click to set waypoints. So we don't need to keep paying attention all the time. We can tell the peasants exactly how to move, where to move. I think that's the enemy there. I think it's time for Give me the money. We will win and we build this team too. You can also give numbers to your um, plots, you know, to your building plots. Plots. So we don't need to go always back to the base to build. You can give like number three, for example, to one of your settlements. And when you have the money for the stable, you can just press, you know, the number three. And then press S as a shortcut for the stable. These small things can also improve your gameplay a little bit. So make sure to use the shortcuts properly. Okay, we bring more and more peasant warriors. We love to see it. One of the greatest matchups actually you can get in BFM1 between uh, Rohan and Isengard. They are attacking the this level 2 peasant is going to be quite helpful. I mean level 3 peasant is going to be quite helpful. And level 4 Hobbit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So Mary is level 4. Oh, he's creeping this but I will let him do that. He has war chant on the Uruk so I don't want to fight this. Like he needs to perma defense. Courage, Mary. People Show some courage here. Come together. We are ready to ride out. We're attacking him. Strike forward swiftly. He needs to perma defense, boys. So we now take the troll creep in the middle of the map because the troll is not at his home. He can use this momentum for us. Be careful. There are cave trolls near. And I don't want to go for the heal from the spell book. I want to actually save up three power points to unlock the Elven Alliance. It's the power spike for the good factions. Oh, I don't want to go for the 50 50. Let's trample. For Lord and Land. For Land and Lord. I don't know which way around. Can we take it? Nice, we took it. Beautiful. I'm happy. I'm happy. And also, we took money from the creep, too. Beautiful. We better do something. Great. So now the punishment will begin. We, with the first Rohirrim, we can always look to destroy his settlements, and then the second and third Rohirrim can be used for creeping. 
if a very strong uh, peasant and also hobbit so even if he has a pikeman there um, this combination of the hobbit plus peasant will counter this like it's a rts game right so it's counter system swordman counter pikeman pikeman counter horses horses counter swordman okay we will get so many power points now that's beautiful beautiful i'm also gonna go for the for the stable level two for the for the horseman shields so it's gonna increase our durability quite a bit against arrows bruh what happened be on guard Oof, that hurts, bro. I mean, it's your fault, but I can't do anything about it, bro. It's your fault. Okay, level 2 incoming. I mean, Hortman Shields incoming. Now, we have 4 on here the, on, on the field. We can give them all numbers. I'm gonna give those to the number 3. Number one, um, number two, I mean, okay. So we have almost the power points for the elves too. And like, usually you don't get to the point in which you are that rich. Our early game was really impressive. That we can do multiple things simultaneously. So we can go for the horseman shields, armory, and forge fleets at pretty much the same time, you know? And that's gonna be very hard for him to counter because the first push is gonna have a very high damage output thanks to the forge fleets. In very high durability thanks to the horseman shields. Oh, I mean, here's on host player too, by the way. Here's the advantage here. Please keep properly. Okay, let's go for the first push with the two Rohirrim only. And during the push, we will also get the power points for the heal. So we can have the sustain to stay in the base for a longer duration. They are so rich, boys. Holy. And we don't need to stop making peasants, you know. They, they cost $120, so they are very affordable. And we have a very strong economy anyway. Oh, the, the timing, though. He just got the Uruk to rank 2, and he needs to now face my elves, bro. Oh, I see the crossbowman hidden behind. I can go for a trample, but I would rather do damage to the buildings. And he's positioning the pikemen with the crossbowman. So, oh, smart from him to sell them, actually. Smart, he doesn't want to feed them. So when he sells them, he doesn't feed power points. And in exchange to that, he will also get some money from them, you know what I'm saying? It's a pretty smart move, if I must say so myself. So we can go for the distraction of the armory. And keep rushing over and over again. That's pretty much the plan. So what we could have been doing is before we summon the elves, we could go for Theorin, and then we put Theorin next to the elves, so the elves become more tinky and also do more damage. But as I saw the lords, I didn't want to do that. We went for Sharku, but it's totally fine. He has no pikemen. How he is he gonna plan to stop my four Rohirrim push? You just can't, bro. Like, none of the structures hit rank 3 yet. We had a very strong opening into this game. And Rohan can definitely turn a great start into a quick victory. Just make sure that we don't lose any Rohirrim. Lourdes will be going down. Nice, beautiful. Lourdes, but, I mean, he's strong, but you cannot step up like this with 1 HP, bro. You wanna chase my Rohirrim down? Uh, I wish I could. I can save him. I don't know. Maybe he will get to hit, but I have heavy armor. He's gonna go. He's gonna call it. GG well played, my friend. That's gonna be a quickie. Uh, how to dominate Isengard as Rohan on the map? Best fault. GG well played, boys. I hope you enjoyed it. Welcome to the 2v2 BFME1 online battle arena. This time on the map, Duradan Forest. And. I will get to play with the Mordor faction. 
I mean, it's pretty much the perfect time just because I just finished the evil campaign, uh, the remastered evil campaign for Beef Me One. It was awesome. And maybe I will give it also a go for the for the good campaign, which has been also reward uh, plenty of new heroes and units added to the campaign, which makes the gameplay overall much more fun. But for now, we are in the multiplayer and we need to make sure to climb the ladder by taking fighting. everyone down. Double orc pit technology, boys. Double orc pit technology. You like the orcs? So do I. Let's go. Come on! Don't waste time. Come on! We're finished digging the orc pit. Say hello. Come on! You laborers, get to work. I mean, the downside of this technology of double output is we kind of feel poor, huh? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm broke, bro. I'm just like, I don't have money. But the beautiful part about the op double output technology is that we have such a great early game presence. Like, we... This guy's fanboying me, bro. <laughs> uh, it, it feels awkward to be fanboyed as a beef me YouTuber, you know what I'm saying? You know what would be the most embarrassing thing ever? And it would be pretty much the same thing. I mean, the coolest thing ever in the world. If anybody, like, I can imagine I walked to the street, through the street, and then I talked to a friend of mine, and some people walk past me, they hear my voice, and they're like, oh my god, are you Shanks, the person who's making me YouTube videos? I've been subscribing to your channel for a long time. Imagine this. I mean, the, the, the chance that this is gonna happen is extremely low. Because the world is big, bro. Like, the chance that this is gonna happen, let's be honest. I don't think that's gonna happen. This Mary will die. The Orcs. Why they did? Why did they betray Adar actually in the Rings of Power? I just don't get it. I, why didn't they show us why they betrayed Adar? Get ready for fighting. Let's move. The enemy is on us. Goblins, pathetic scum. Be ready. Get ready for fighting. Against the power of Mordor. And against the power of orcs, there can be no victory. We creep the whole map. You see the double orc pit strength? Like that you can do all of that stuff simultaneously while being broke? Because you don't need money for recruiting orcs. They are for free. Yes, they are not very strong, but the in numbers, in big numbers, they can also still do a great job, you know? Beautiful. Okay. We're not stopping here. Get this, get that. We put up the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now we can go for Haradrims. We have zero resource building in the base, boys. We have two, two Orc Pit and a Haradrim Palace. That's We're all we got. Here. That's all we need. Don't waste time. Bra, as my precious. Listen up. Over here. Too risky. Too risky. We can do it. Pay attention. We don't have any friends. All right. Be ready. Speak on our stuff. I mean, if a level 3 orc, by the way, uh, when they are rank 3, they will immediately transform into the black orcs, which will make them to a very deadly unit. So a rank 3 orc can actually 1v1 a rank 3 peasant quite easily. He can 1v1 a rank 2 uruk, rank 2 soldier, I think. I'm not sure about the rank 2 soldier. The soldiers and uruks are an exception to the rule, because in a row fight, they have the chance to use the shield wall formation. That's something the peasants and or orcs can't do. And this gives you, of course, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, a huge advantage. So we're gonna creep literally everything. The enemies are so broke and poor, we destroyed their settlements while our settlements have been remaining untouched. And for that reason, at the beginning, when you when you go for the double orbit opening, you need to make sure that you pick a settlement as your first starting settlement that is in a safe spot. You don't want to pick the one in the front, which might go down. I'm gonna go for the scavenger. Let's go. No industry needed. Pay 
Outpost captured. We are, um, I mean, we are still not very rich, but it's about to be changed very, very soon. My ally is super rich, though. He has a full base. He looks pretty strong. More Herodrim have just arrived. Always hit waypoints with your orc pits, so you don't need to check them all the time. Like, you don't want to have idle units, by the way, guys. Even if it's orcs and they cost nothing, but you don't want them to chill there and do nothing. You know, when you set waypoints, they will at least walk to the spot, at least draw some attention, put some pressure. In either case, they will be more useful than being idle. Because some sometimes I see people, you know, recruiting orcs and they forget to move to orcs, then, you know, that's not cool. Don't do this. Just set waypoints. No, it's on cooldown, bro. It's on cooldown. Sorry, I didn't pay attention. You wanted to take down the, the Uruk pit? Maybe with the Eye of Sauron he could have done it. But I was uh, selfish. Like Sauron. I want to go for the Mooma kill plan. Let's go. Why? Why did he leave? Oneman Bukak. Why are you leaving, bro? You have a good looking beast there. You have full beast. Don't need to leave. I can't even know. I don't even know who left. Is it the Rohan player or the Eisen player? I can't tell. Yeah, murder on big maps is pretty powerful. <laughs> like. I like, look, before, I, when it comes to the early game, I like to have the, the, the pot potential possibility to play the game with units. I don't want to be waiting in my base for one orc to come out at, the, at a time, you know? That's why double orc pit gives you so much more um, control in the early game and gives you the potential to defend yourself a bit easier, to expand a bit faster, and to destroy also enemy settlements way, way quicker. All in all, the downside, of course, is you will progress a bit slower into the game and you might get punished big time because in a 2v2 there is a chance that the enemy will group up against you and then you will be losing your only settlements outside and you will be starving pretty much uh, to a defeat. But no risk, no fun. So you need to sometimes take the risk. Give me the Mubakios. Bring. Bring out the wolf's head. You see, the orcs are putting so much pressure. They have orcs everywhere. Pressuring the pikemen from Aizen. You know, kind of making the Rohirrim from Rohan chase us non-stop. So we bring the fight to them. Wait, what? What? Do you see the Rohirrim, uh, the Haradrim boys? I can't even move them. Can I get them out? I can get them out. Okay, nice. Beautiful. <laughs> they was looking some... You know, they was looking not uh, right. Now I have, I have Sauron, bro. You don't even need to ask me. Now I got it. And also we will siege the Rohan. I mean, my, my ally is no, uh, no Forge Blitzer. Huh? That's why his Rohirrim are not dealing too much damage. But I want you to take a look into the minimap. <laughs> we are everywhere, bro. Like, we have everything. We are so rich. Like, we have lit literally 80% of the map. Should we go for the Calder Heart? But even if we do go for the Calder Heart, uh, we have no available command point. So, 
I think darkness would be a better choice. And by the way, that's the fastest way you can reach Balrog with this faction. So you basically go for Eye of Sauron, then go for the for the um see it for the Scavenger, then you save for the Call the Heart, and then right after to the Balrog. So I mean of course you will miss the industry, you will miss the Tinted Land. But that's the fa fastest way if you want to just rush a Balrog. And that's also the cheapest way. Like two power points for the scavenger. Six power points for the for the Calder Heart, that's eight plus 20 for Badrog. So 28 power points you need. And when you go the other way, when you go for I starting, then you need Tinted Land for the industry. So you need one for the Tinted Land, two for the industry, that's three. Then you need seven for the Darkness, that's ten. And then 20 for the Badrog, that's 30. 30 power points. So basically you need four power points more. Which is a lot when you think about this. Move, Let's creep ready. the remaining creep on the map. Duradan Forest. <laughs> just because it worked in the films, it doesn't mean it will work also in... Oh my god, I just killed my own orcs. Just because it worked in the films, it doesn't mean that it will also work in the in the game, bro. The guy was legit trying to charge against the Mumma kill with the Rohirrim. Mumokil is the coolest unique unit in the game, actually. Monster. Plenty of damage. But slow when they turn, slow when they move. Which kind of makes sense because they are giant. They are gigantic. So I'm gonna now do something, boys. I'm gonna gr group up all my orc warriors at this point. At this point. At this spot. Can't even talk. I need one more power point for the darkness. Can I please get darkness? It's time for the Witch King too. Witch King, there we go. Okay, group all up together in one spot. And then with the darkness and Witch King... Wait, I will get darkness here, watch this. Just trample. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, we got darkness. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, you know what time it is? It is time for the orb invasion. Okay, the day of the Uruks is over. The time of the Orc has come. Darkness. Let it be darkness, boys. My Witch King are gonna be joining there very, very soon. Don't worry about it. So now, even the weak Orcs, with enough numbers and with enough leadership, can be very threatening. Very, very threatening. Do not come between the Nazgul. Look at this damage, boys. Imagine my, my Witch King is not close yet, but he's coming. That's gonna make it even tougher and more, more devastating. No man can kill me. Yep, 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 yep. That's gonna be it, boys. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.